Chris Angelella. Uh, yes, that's me. <laughs> is an exceptional individual, a student in our Adults with Disabilities class right here on the Marchman campus. And despite the challenges he faces as an adult with autism, Chris has achieved remarkable success, self-publishing his first book, Dottie's Freckles, in 2021, and subsequently adding four more books to his repertoire. Mm -hmm. His ability to communicate and connect with others is truly inspiring. Re reflecting his talent as a writer and his passion as an advocate for people with autism. Throughout his book series, Chris's deep understanding of the world of disabilities and his profound love for animals shines brightly. Mm -hmm. It has been my privilege to work closely with Chris as his teacher over the past five years, witnessing firsthand his personal growth and development, both as a writer and as an individual. With the unwavering support and guidance of his family, I have no doubt that Chris Angelella's name will continue to resonate in the literary and advocacy spheres, paving the way for an either, even greater accomplishments in the future. Once again, I thank you for joining us today to celebrate Chris's achievements. Your, present here, your presence here is a testament to the strength of our community and the power of collective support. Let us continue to uplift and champion individuals like Chris who inspire us with their resilience, creativity, and determination. Thank you. Do I need that microphone or, or can they hear me for this? They can hear my yeah. Okay. So yes, thank you for having me. My name is Chris Angelella and I am about to present a slideshow presentation, but I am also giving a little spoiler about something I didn't practice but will be talking about. This journey has also talked to me about rejection. Why is that important? You'll just have to wait until after the presentation to find out. <laughs> anyway, so let's begin. So let me begin the presentation then. Good morning. Thank you for having me. My name is Chris Angelella and I am 25 years old. Before I begin the presentation, I would like to open with some jokes. So here's my newest joke. What kind of building has many stories? The library. Yeah. All right, what's another good one? Oh yeah, what is, a, what is the scariest type of story writer? A ghost writer. <laughs> All right, here's another good one. What is Mickey Mouse's favorite U.S. state? Soda. Mini soda. <laughs> and the one that, of course, gets everybody cracked up. What is a dinosaur's least favorite Christmas reindeer? Comet. <laughs> And this will be the last one, even though it is outdated by today's standards. How does a dog stop a VCR? They press the pause button. <laughs> yes, like I said, try telling that one today, though most people probably don't know what a VCR is now. <laughs> and now, without further ado, this is my presentation of how Chris and the ABLE universe came to be. ABLE stands for acceptance believing, leading, and exceptional. This journey took over 20 years in the making. I have autism, Asperger's syndrome, and there is no cure. People have asked me what it's like to have this exceptionality. I tell them that sometimes I feel like I am trapped between two worlds. The world of an adult where I am supposed to be 25 years old and the world of a child because most of my interests and shows I like to watch are usually more of an interest for children. One example, though it went on to be more of a family show, Thomas the Tank Engine. I also have a gift where if anyone gives me the month, day, and year they were born, I can tell them what day of the week it was. Though I've done quite a few people in this room already, if anyone else is interested, we will save that for after the presentation. As previously stated, I am hoping to build an ABLE universe. 
some of the other obstacles I have faced besides living in two worlds. One of them is stimming, where I flap my arms or do this, and I sometimes jump up and down. It usually means I'm either happy or I'm trying to get stressed or I'm annoyed. It may make some people uncomfortable, but that's just part of my autism. Usually I do it like this when I'm really excited, though. I'm also different in social situations, meaning I'm not often good with reciprocal conversations. Sometimes I have the tendency to only talk about things having to do with myself, and I forget to ask other people about their day and what goes on in their life, but I am working on it. Understanding questions is another hard thing I'm not good at sometimes either, so sometimes I need clarification. Or sometimes I misunderstand and mishear something, then I apologize a lot thinking I upset or did something wrong to somebody. Intelligence. My intelligence is usually good for things like geography, movies, TV shows, voice actors, and art, but when it comes to certain math like counting money, I still need help with that, but this experience, but this journey has been helping me with that a little bit. And yes, why would food be an obstacle for me? Because unfortunately I am allergic to most fruits and vegetables. Though that may sound weird, it is indeed the truth. If I eat certain fruits like bananas, cantaloupe, or watermelon, or if I eat certain vegetables like carrots or corn, let my lips swell up. So yeah, while they say fruit and vegetables are supposed to be good for you, they clearly are not good for me. <laughs> And believe it, or oh, believe it or not, I was actually one of the many few kids who didn't like pizza growing up. And I actually only started eating pizza two years ago, and I loved it ever since. For those who aren't aware what day that was, it was February 9th, 2022, because if you did not know, February 9th is pizza day. Ways that I have overcome the obstacles are trying new foods, for example, or asking for clarification when I need help understanding certain questions. Like if you were to ask me what is going on right now, and if I don't understand the question exactly, my parents often have to clarify for me in a way I will understand. I'm not trying to ignore people, I just don't always process right away. It's part of my autism. I think I have to keep going that until the pictures come up. My first book was originally titled Spotty Dotty, and it was done more on storyboards than an actual book. Book one was done between me and my former art teacher, Mr. Patrick Stickney, who retired the day I graduated high school. Since he had retired and since I had graduated, we had more time to make the book look more like a book because we only had four months to complete this as a senior project. So we didn't really have time to make it look like a book. We had to do everything more on a storyboard. You'll see how different the pictures look in a few seconds. Because Spotty Dottie had been taken for various other books, we retitled the book to Dottie's Freckles. The book was published on August 6, 2020. One day later, August 7, 2020, the first copy was purchased. All of my books are currently self-published through Amazon because we learned that is less expensive than hiring an actual publisher. Also, everything in my books is hand-drawn and hand-colored because that old-school paper and pencil is the type of artwork I like to do the most. For all the students here at Marchman, how many of you still like to do old school paper and pencil? Okay, pretty decent. How many of you are more digital though? All right, a little decent of both. These are some of the pictures in the actual Dottie Spreckles book compared to how they looked in the storyboard version. Don't these look more cleaned up and a little more better? Yeah. All right, I will give you a few seconds to look at them. My second book is titled Sissa Simon Says, and it was published on 2-22 of 22, or February 22nd, 2022. A lot of twos going on. Once again, my books were self-published through Amazon, and beginning with this book, we now work with my current illustrator. Remember how I said book one was done between me and my former art teacher, Mr. Patrick Stickney? Well, because he had retired and because it was a lot of work, he was one and done, son. So from this book, on, 
So from this book onwards, we now work with my current illustrator, Jason McHenry, who is an adaptive PE teacher at Hudson High School. And is Jason anywhere in the audience? Please stand up, Jason. Jason, stand up. And a little joke I always say about Jason, he's so big and buff, you wouldn't believe he knows how to draw. <laughs> and also from this book onwards, Dottie now wears her signature blue outfit because blue is the color of autism awareness. These are some examples of the pictures in the Sissa Simon Says book. Any, you guys need a few seconds to look at them? Go ahead. Also, there is an interesting story I have about this book, and if you would like to hear it after the presentation, give me a round of applause. Okay, I guess I'm telling it. Everybody look, everybody good? The third book in my Dottie series is titled Connor's Clever Shot You're On and it talks about how blind people play basketball. I am actually the vice president for Pasco County Special Olympics, and I actually have a friend that I used to do swimming with who actually is blind, and wouldn't you know it, he scored a slam dunk once while playing basketball. How exactly does this person in my book play basketball while blind? You'll just have to read the book to find out. <laughs> These are some examples of the pictures in the Connor's Clever Shot You're On book. Giving everybody a few seconds again. Everybody good? One of my newest books is titled Oakley's Sanctuary Friends. It was published on March 20th, 2023, which if you did not know, March 20th is the birthday of Linda Larkin, voice of Jasmine from Disney's Aladdin franchise. This features an entirely new cast of characters that are mostly talking animals, but it exists in the same universe as the, Oakley, as the Dottie books. Can anybody tell me what animals they see on the cover other than the... Yes, Jacob? A penguin. A penguin, yes. Oh, thank you, Lauren. A panda. Mateos? Red panda. Dog. Red panda. And there's one more. Whitney? Very good, Whitney. Oh, by the way, Miss Carrie, Miss Carrie Dittman, your birthday is World Okapi Day. <laughs> These are some examples of the pictures in the Oakley Sanctuary Friends book. We pretty much already went over what animals we see, so once again, give everybody a few seconds to look at them. Everybody good? My newest book is titled Speckle Delivery. It was published on January 15th, 2024, and it talks about another unique animal most kids are not familiar with. What animal is it? You'll just have to wait until, after, until towards the end of the presentation. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> However, as a little spoiler, these are some of the examples of the pictures in the Speckle Delivery book. But I can tell you the new animal is in a few of these pictures. The window of opportunities that have opened I have done various comic conventions where I met many famous voice actors, such as to the far right, we have me with Jody Benson, the voice, of the voice of Ariel from Disney's Little Mermaid franchise. And the far left, we have me with Townsend Holman, who voiced Michelangelo in the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show. And wouldn't you know it, I'll be seeing him again later this year. Why, you may ask? You'll just have to wait for a few seconds. Other voice actors I've met include Maurice LaMarche, who worked on the show Animaniacs and the Pinky and the Brain spinoff. How many of you know who Pinky and the Brain are? Pretty decent, pretty decent. And of course, because he's one of my favorite authors, I've met the Grinch from Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Kind of fitting for me, for I am a big Dr. Seuss fan. If you have a favorite Dr. Seuss book, raise your hand. All right, I'll just quickly do one little vote. If your favorite book is The Cat in the Hat, raise your hand. If your favorite book is The Lorax, raise your hand. If your favorite book is Green Eggs and Ham, raise your hand. 
If your favorite book is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, raise your hand. And if your favorite book is Horton, Here's a Who, raise your hand. It seems, well, clearly my favorite got one, Green Eggs and Ham, seem to have gotten the most votes. Other windows that have opened where I've actually met R2-D2 at one of my conventions, and wouldn't you know it, he picked out one of my books. He picked out my Connor book because, wouldn't you know it, red happens to be R2-D2's favorite color. Surprised he doesn't know Mickey Mouse because that's also Mickey's favorite color. And another voice actor who I've met is Jim Cummings, the voice of Winnie the Pooh. And wouldn't you know it, he's also the voice of Tigger. The Winnie the Pooh characters have been a big part of my life and they still are today. When I was a kid, I would take my stuffed animals and recreate scenes that I saw on television. One of those scenes was from the 2000 Winnie the Pooh film, The Tigger Movie. How many of you know The Tigger Movie? Pretty decent, pretty decent. How many of you have not seen it but have a feeling it's probably about Tigger? <laughs> so anyway, the scene I recreated from the movie was this avalanche scene where Tigger accidentally yells very loud and he causes an avalanche to come toppling down a mountain. Then he, Pooh, Piglet, Rabbit, Roo, and Eeyore are running to actually escape the avalanche. So I would take my stuffed animals and take pillows and blankets and how many people remember Lincoln Logs? I would take those and make them come toppling down all over my stuffed animals from my parents' bed and I would make them pretend they were running from it. Now let's just say you have to move much faster than I could move my animals to actually escape an avalanche. <laughs> Not all superheroes wear capes. This is me, yes, I look good dressed as a Teletubby. <laughs> this is me singing the song Yakko's World with legendary voice actor Rob Paulson, who, like Townsend Coleman, is one of the voice actors from the original 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show. And I'll be seeing him again later this year. So why am I seeing all these turtle actors again, you may be wondering? Because towards the end of June, we will be doing my first out-of-state convention in Atlanta where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle voices will be attending. Anywho, Rob Paulson also is the voice of Yakko Warner from Animaniacs, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, and in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he is 1987 Raphael and 2012 Donatello. Yes, Mateos? Raphael. Yes, Raphael. And wouldn't you know it, this is me singing a song of the Yakko's World song with him at the 2023 Tampa Bay Comic Con. Well, while it took me various tries to learn the song, when Rob Paulson first did the recording session for the song 31 years ago in 1993, he got it on the first try. Now that is impressive. And now I can actually sing the song in one take. And I think we have a question back here quickly. What? Uh, yes, I'm dressed as Poe. Yes, the red Teletubby. And uh, let's see, can we get the video to play? All right, then maybe if there's time, I'll have to just sing the song myself, or I'll show it to you on my phone. I guess you want me to sing it now? All right, all right, I'll quickly sing it. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guiana, and still, Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, and French Guiana, Barbados, and Guam, Norway, and Sweden, and Iceland, and Finland, and Germany, now in one piece, Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey, and Greece, Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman, Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq, and Iran. There, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, Rovi, Amitz, Kuwait, and Bahrain. The Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Portugal, France, England, Denmark, and Spain. India, Pakistan, Burma, Afghanistan, Thailand, Nepal, and Bhutan. Campuchia, Malaysia, the Begwish, Asia, and China, Korea, Japan, Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet, Indonesia, the Philippine Islands, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, and Borneo, and Vietnam. Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, Swaziland, Gambia, Guinea, Algeria, Ghana, 
Burundi, Lesotho, and Malawi, Togo, the Spanish Sahara is gone. Niger, Nigeria, Chad, and Liberia, Egypt, and Nina, Gabon, Tanzania, Somalia, Kenya, and Mali, Sierra Leone, and Algier, Dahomey, Namibia, Senegal, Libya, Cameroon, Congo, Zaire, Ethiopia, Guinea, Bissau, Madagascar, Rwanda, Mahor, and Cayman, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Guitar, Gustafia, Crete, Mauritania, then Transylvania, Mongo, Sabalta, and Palestine, Vigia, Australia, Sudan. <laughs> Also, one more question. Oh, we moved on, so I'll just go first. Marchman Technical College is an amazing school. I have made many friendships and learned a lot while I've been here. And this will be my last book signing here as a student. The reason why, we will get to that later. But for now, on March 10th, 2021, I had my first book signing at Marchman Technical College as well. This is me during the first book signing with some of the original teachers and staff that worked here. So since this will be my last one, let's make this a good one. <laughs> at speaking engagements or vendor events, which we always do to, to sell my books, we sell our awareness merchandise that we use to help other people embrace their differences and to achieve their dreams. Some of the merchandise we sell is right over there on that table today, but other ones that we have include this therapeutic slime, which a childhood friend of mine made, or these love signs or other puzzle pieces with inspirational sayings on them, reefs, that elephant, and the merchandise I came up with all my own, this lion sign that reads, be bold, be brave, be you. Yeah. I bought... <laughs> all right, so let's see where we are next in the slideshow. Oh, what do you know? The story time. So I said I would not be going into too many spoilers about my special delivery book because I am about to actually read it to you. You can read along too if you can see the screen, but I'll be reading through my book because it's easier for me to read it that way. Ahem. Here I go. Keep in mind, I don't read as well as Dr. Seuss probably did, but... Speckle Delivery by Chris Angelella. Illustrated by Chris Angelella and Jason McHenry again. Please stand up. <laughs> and one of the dedications in my book is to my friends, the Carmen family, for which Mandy Carmen is the one who helped us make the therapeutic slime we sell now. A new friend is joining one of the enclosures at Mortimer's Animal Sanctuary. What kind of animal is it? Something amazing might happen. It was an exciting day at Mortimer's Animal Sanctuary. Twin zookeepers, Logan and Melanie, along with their father, Jeff, were f finishing looking over some notes. Their animal friends, Oakley, Robbie, and Flippers, were curious to know what all the commotion was about. But Flick, the panda cub, already knew what it was. Maybe it's a new shipment of food, said Robbie. Honk, honk, yeah, added Flippers, like honk, fish. Or maybe a new honk, honk, order of ice cubes. I don't know what they're excited for, said Oakley. I doubt it's for ice cubes, but I doubt it's for food or ice cubes. Melanie looks too excited, and Logan looks like he's thinking about, well, whatever it is those notes say. Later that day, Logan and Melanie lifted a wooden crate up onto a surgical bed, and Jeff made an announcement. A new animal is joining our sanctuary today, he said. And finally, Logan opened the crate. Out walked a bear cub. He was mostly black with yellow markings going around his eyes. Out of curiosity, can any of you tell this is probably a bear? What is that? asked Oakley. It's a bear, replied Flick with a chuckle. Only what kind of bear is it? finished Robbie. 
This is a spectacled bear, said Melanie. Yes, added Logan. They get their name because the yellow markings around their eyes make it look like they are wearing glasses. But, added Jeff, they're also called Andean bears because they hail from the Andes Mountains of South America. How good do you think Jason did of drawing that map of South America? <laughs> You're my illustrator, Jason. That's why I need your help, because I can't do movement. <laughs> we spectacled bears, began the bear cub with a little chuckle, are actually the only bear species native to South America. My name's Speckle. Speckle the spectacled bear. Honk, honk. That's easy to honk. Remember, said Flippers. The Mortimer... The Mortimer family showed the other animals Speckle's new enclosure. It was lush green with no cave, but a leafy nest inside. Why do you think that is? Spectacled bears don't sleep in caves, said Speckle. Speckle's right, agreed Logan. They are a species of bear who sleep in nests. Spectacled bears also don't hibernate during the winter, finished Melanie. You know, because it doesn't really snow in South America, right? Later that day, it started to rain. Logan and Melanie brought umbrellas to keep their friends dry. Speckle, however, didn't seem to mind the rain at all. I don't really like rain, said Robbie. Then he asked Speckle, how come you're okay with getting wet? <clears throat> Speckle laughed. Then he made a little statement. Being from South America, it rains quite often. In fact, South America gets the most rainfall of any other continent. It's so rainy where I come from, I've just gotten used to getting wet over time. It's starting to rain a lot harder, though, said Melanie. Yes, agreed Logan. Our work is done for the day, and Dad said we and our friends can go to our house now. Are you coming too, Speckle? asked Oakley. Wouldn't miss it, Speckle replied. In the Mortimer's house, Speckle was splashing around with flippers in the bathtub. Honk, honk, flippers called. You're quite fun, honk, for me to honk, splash around with. Most other animals I know, honk, don't like getting wet, honk. <laughs> then Speckle made his statement again. Being from South America, it rains quite often. In fact, South America gets the most rainfall of any other continent. I love to play in the water, Flippers. It's just something we spectacled bears love to do. And if you didn't see it, the bathtub is shaped like South America. <laughs> that night, Logan and Melanie let their friends sleep over at their house. While the others were sleeping and snoozing, Speckle was still up and about. Oakley woke up, and he was surprised to see Speckle wasn't sleeping. Why are you still up, Speckle? He whispered. Then Speckle replied, Spectacled bears are nocturnal animals, Oakley. We are more active at night. Oakley was amazed. I don't think I'd be able to stay up at night, he said to Speckle with a chuckle. Eventually, Speckle did go to sleep like the others. The next morning, while Flick, Oakley, Robbie, and Flippers were still sleeping, Logan and Melanie were in the garage getting their Jeep ready. Speckle was helping too. But before they finished, Jeff came in and asked his children a question. Logan, Melanie, he began, have you ever thought about taking some of the animals at the sanctuary out on the road with you? Us, asked Melanie. Take the animals out on the road, Logan asked back. Yes, replied Jeff. I'm very busy working around the sanctuary, but I have a feeling you two with all of your animal friends will fit the job just fine. Melanie was all in for it, but Logan wasn't so sure. Can any of you figure out Logan is probably the more serious one? Are you sure about that, Dad? He asked. The sanctuary gets very busy. Speckle chuckled. I have a bear's instinct that your dad will be just fine with help from the other employees, Logan, he said. Speckle's right, Logan, agreed Jeff. Plus, you and Melanie will have Oakley, Flick, Robbie, Flippers, and Speckle joining you. Don't worry about me. Okay, stated Logan. We'll do it. As soon as the other animals woke up, Speckle told them the big news, and they all cheered for joy. 
Looks like we might be going on a lot of adventures, said Melanie. I agree, finished Logan. But they didn't realize how true that statement would be. And that is the story of Speckle Delivery. <laughs> to be continued. I am in the process of writing another animal book. In fact, I finally got my iPad's annoying battery fixed so I can actually do that. <laughs> so I'm torn between two animals I'll be writing about, the clouded leopard or the squirrel monkey. If you're more for the clouded leopard, give me a round of applause. <laughs> if you're more for the squirrel monkey, give me a round of applause. <laughs> Ooh, that sounded like a tie, didn't it? Well, I guess the Clouded Leopard will have to go first, then the Squirrel Monkey, just because of how I'm setting it up. If any of you are interested in following my journey or would like to stay updated on when we'll be at other markets and events, here are my social media links, which for any students or other people, we will be passing out business cards later that have all the information on them. Or if you are comfortable with email as well, we will take down an email as well if that's easier. Before I wrap up the slideshow, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Mateos? How does the speckled eggs stay up in the middle of the night? They just do. They're nocturnal. How do they sleep? They, they usually sleep in nests because they don't, build, they don't sleep in caves. Yes, Lauren? What do speckled bears eat? Mostly fruit. Fruit? Yes, they're, they're, they're omnivores like humans, meaning they eat both plants and meat. Anybody else have a question? Anybody else? Okay, if that's all the questions, then that will conclude the slideshow. Thank you for your time. Let's all, oops. <laughs> We're all different. Let's embrace it. Thank you for your time. Now, some of you are probably wondering why during the slideshow I mentioned this will be my last book signing here as a student, right? Well, I have a speech that will clarify everything. This was my mom's idea. <laughs> okay, it was a collaboration. I don't mean to put any teary eyes, but here it comes. I wrote this message because I, want, I don't want to forget something. I am thankful to Marchman Technical College for having an adult education program that accepted me into the program seven years ago. After Ms. Carroll retired, Ms. Kim became our teacher. Ms. Kim is an amazing teacher who works hard to help students succeed and reach their highest potential. So much so that on March 10th, 2021, Ms. Kim organized my first ever book signing at Marchman. As a result of her hard work to make the book signing happen, I ended up getting interviewed by Channel 10 News and Gail Cuiardo, which started the path that has led me back here today. Thanks to Ms. Kim, I am continuing to succeed and my classmates too. The tears were shed together are proof that we have built something special here. Although we will not be together as a class next year, I will always remember and my time here at Marchman and I am forever thankful that I have valued. It's sad to think that the program has ended. So yes, my program. What? But I will still continue to succeed. Mostly I'll be at home and still continuing with the vendor markets though, which I need my parents help with because I can't drive. <laughs> What? Yes. Now also, is anybody who I have not done yet interested in that little birthday magic trick I did? But, but FYI, do not ask me for any days from the 1800s because nobody would be alive. <laughs> anybody interested? I had somebody ask me for that two years ago. Yes, what's your name again? Mr. Hilbert. Mr. Hilbert, when is your birthday? August 20, 1959. That's easy. That was a Thursday. Oh, and Mr. Oh wait, Mr. Hilbert, not to make you feel old, but the day you were born, we made Hawaii the 50th state the day after. <laughs> yes, Miss Shelby. I forgot. I forgot. What? what was mine? I forgot. January 21st, 1998. You were a Wednesday. Of the year, right? Nolani, whose birthday is also World Okapi Day. What is your birthday, Nolani? You, Noelani, were born on a Wednesday. You were born on a Tuesday. Lauren? I was born on January 27, 2002. That was a Sunday. 
Yes, you with your hand up. June 16th, 2004. I have a friend who was born that same day, and that was a leap year and a Wednesday. Oh, and Miss Andy's birthday is also June 16th. Yes, Mateos? You forgot to tell about the zodiac sign you were born. Well, I, I, well, not everybody believes in zodiac signs, Mateos, but Aquarius. I... Yes, you're an Aquarius. <laughs> so anyway, you might be wondering from earlier, so which story would you guys mind if I quickly tell you before I do the book signing? Would you like to hear the interesting story about the Simon book or the interesting story about the rejection thing? Or would you like to hear both? Okay, let me start with the rejection one first because chronologically that's the one that came first. So July, uh, July 31st, 2022, my parents and some friends of ours went to the 2022 Tampa Bay Comic Con. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention we're actually vendors for it this year. Well, back on topic. So we met this voice actor, Jess Harnell, who worked on the show Animaniacs. And he was telling a story at the panel he was doing that as a voice actor, you don't always get every role you audition for. So in the late 90s, this is where the rejection comes in, he auditioned for this particular role and it was down between him and the other guy got the role, but the other guy got the role. And the voice actor, Jess Harnell, who we met, didn't think the role would go anywhere since he didn't get it. Do you think it went anywhere? Would you like to tell what the role was? Here's what he said at the panel. Eh, who would watch a show about a talking sponge? <laughs> So yeah, 25 years later, that talking sponge is still here. Also, Dad, what's the interesting thing I tell about SpongeBob? SpongeBob premiered on my dad's birthday in 1999. <laughs> and now for the Simon story. How, yes, this book got rejected various, various times before it was published, just like how the voice actor we met Jess Harnell was rejected from Spongebob, and then we see how far that went. So anyway, besides the rejection, there is another interesting story about Sissa Simon Says. A famous person actually bought it from me. Allison Armgrim, or as you would all know him, Nell, Nell her, Nelly from Little House on the Prairie. So how did that come about? So tw beginning of September 2023, my parents, well, my mother and I at the time, we're doing the 2023 Fanboy Orlando Expo, and Allison Arngrim, because they were doing a Little House on the Prairie reunion, was actually at her booth and nobody was there, so I just went up and talked to her. Before we left for the event, I actually watched an episode of Little House on the Prairie where this character, James, played by Jason Bateman, round of applause if you know who Jason Bateman is, wanted to be friends with this boy named Gideon who stutters. Gideon was actually played by Peter Billingsley, alias Ralphie from A Christmas Story. So anyway, James wanted to be friends with Gideon, but he accidentally made fun of his stuttering. When I told this episode to Allison Arngrim, she was talking about a different episode, but it's the same thing. She, she was surprised that I talked about that, and when my mother went up to her booth, she actually saw the shirt that Miss Andy and Miss Carrie are wearing, and she goes, are you Chris's mother? So then she explains that the episode where she, as Nellie, had to make fun of a kid who was stutter, who had a stutter, was the hardest episode for her to do, because she had to be that mean to this child who had a literal speech impediment, which didn't help because Allison Arngram at the time was in therapy herself. So when I told her I wrote a book about stutter, she actually said, I'm coming over to your booth and buying that book from you. And no, she didn't let me give it to her. She went, I'm over there for making a living. You're over here making a, a living. I'm paying for my book. And she did, and I signed it for her, and the rest is history. Another thing that's part of my autism is sometimes when there's loud cheering like that, I close my eyes so it's not as loud. <laughs> 